What's up guys? Welcome back to Zaddy Sanders. He ended up walking us home last night after the battle with the spork monster and he tucked us in. So let's see what magic we can work on him today because yesterday we made that whole mashed potato thing and he loved it. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonition? And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? I meet up with my bestie and in front of school. Before I can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. My god, who the hell can? Cause it's all about you, Mariam. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, I think I might like hot. Like him? Like, like, like? I see, I told you. So why was she complaining? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders enlisted in the army when he was only three? Not only that, but he founded a special unit of super soldiers who all wear the same hat because they, he put a hat on one time and he thought it looked cool. But Colonel Sanders doesn't even wear a hat, he wears a ribbon tie. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. Okay, but like I could stay out of their relationship, so. When Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School, you're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. Sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Her eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? She checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. He told me all about his passion for spice. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals, and that if I did him him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, and he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. Whatever. Anyhow, when we both share an interest in cooking... Wait, did she make edibles? Is that what they're talking about? What are they talking about? Did she make out of Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spice. I'm definitely not supposed to share his secret recipe. And besides, I only know one ingredient, so I doubt I'd be much use to anyone. It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. I lied and told her I have Newt, because why is she trying to press me like this? Don't you like pop? Why are you going to this man, this spice man? This, uh, this story didn't make sense. I had to lie. Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing as you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. She texted on her phone. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. See, I'm glad I didn't tell her. She immediately went to go text. Oh, he arrives on a fucking horse? He's arriving at school. Should I stand? I'm gonna run to him because if not... Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. Oh. Miss Keisha. Miss Keisha. Miss Keisha! Oh my fucking god, she fucking dead. Uh, it's important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you have to do is repeat my name three times. And my name is... I suddenly awake. I awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to me. He roused me back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his naturally seasoned must? Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. 
bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad. You try to get a peek over at Van Van, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. So I sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices your eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. Time for class and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now I'm upset. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than culinary skills. It's creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it is they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book just like the one you found after your encounter with the spork monster. And apparently I told them it's the same book. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got hot pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing, hee hee. Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls over Van Van's meaty foot. Watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a standing mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a standing mixer. <laughs> Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourself. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just send Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but also a dog. Students, students, please take your seat. I apologize for my late arrival. I've spent the morning chasing a car all around, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. You try to give Sprinkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. Sorry, I get a little worked up if people try to pet me before I've had my morning coffee. Let that be a lesson to you. Sprinkles stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in his trance. It's a scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Cool. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. Down, boy! Auf toppen! That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has napped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. You really do. Which is why, in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss the most and you miss most of the important parts i mean look at him he's hot you come to sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you well fristel naturally this appears to you to be a sample platter which item do you want to sample i grab a glass of water and gulp it down it's cool and crisp like the purest snow melted by this mountain spring hey that was mine it was from my favorite toilet you owe me six dollars how is that six dollars toilet water <laughs> And you've got excellent taste. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the chart. Huh, should we do it or should we not? We'll do it. Stand up and tell them you're on. Count me in. I have to wipe tables with you fools before I set my lunch down. So be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool. Fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Fristel. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkles steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please. Please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sporting court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Nani? Nani? Oh my Ha! Just then, a huge red light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. 
And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. Oh my god! Yeah. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had its chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again today here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does water boil at? going to need to season this chicken before I, I clicked the wrong one bro oh my gosh it's like the pressure you're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it I don't know <laughs> what state of mind offers most flavor G gratitude oh my god your classmates are rooting for you but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you I have to pick up the pace now would be a great time to harness that energy where does it come from shoulder oh my gosh holy shit you try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking what is the sound of success sizzling what He's cheering me on. What a honk! Oh my gosh. I, I literally shoved my hand in the mixer to grab the biscuit dough after putting it in the mixer and broke my hand, apparently. Oh my gosh, so Ashley looks good. Wow, that was the wrong choice, apparently. Oh my gosh. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find an array of delights taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. Oh my gosh. I'm so mad. Wow. Inside, you'll find a delicate delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb ice cream two ways tender nougat and pearls of honey blueberry jelly okay i'm just messing up all over we'll try again okay so i was probably supposed to step back internalize it I guess I burned my eyebrows off. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. He won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. <coughs> you try to run from him, but he approaches you directly. Why are you running? Why are you- I know you're hurting right now, not just from the dis devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well then, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. Way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead end. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight, and I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. He survived for a while anyhow. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like he could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money could, would deter me from giving my best I had to give. As he changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate you're interrupted why are you crying it is i i know i said i wouldn't be back and after the whole fight to death thing maybe you don't really want to see me anymore but i just wanted to say i was wrong to attack you i apologize i know what it's like to what it's like always having to look over your shoulder <laughs> or go Thanks, Porco. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize apologize for the way I've switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I usually, I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were a human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spellbook 
cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. Magic spell book. Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. You should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Crystal, together I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. <laughs> Ooh, a personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Wow, look at those pictures. Oh my gosh. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm excited. I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Okay, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Daddy Sanders invited us back to his house. Ooh. I'll let you know what goes on in the next episode. Hopefully something spicy. We want some spicy chicken up in here. All right, thanks for hanging out with me, playing this game, dating Zaddy Sanders, even though we failed, but it's cool. We made it back. See y'all later in the next one. Ain't no